guys and gals, and every here from Drake Wing Gaming. And some of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today, I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tennis Ace Case Case Path. So, y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome awards like permanent access to our community Discord server, and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> it did rub me the wrong way, too. I was going to say something about it, but Yuichi's overreaction completely disarmed me. My overreaction? Gee, I'm sorry for having your back. That's not what I meant. It was scary how Yuichi-san essentially chased him away while smiling. Whose side are you on? Chaos? Dork. But, yeah, I get why you seemed upset now. I don't know if I'd go so far as being upset by it, but I definitely won't know how to, rea know how to react if someone said that to me. The comment seemed innocuous enough. I don't think he actually meant, to, meant the disrespect. I don't think he did either, but the dude has to learn to control his tongue. After today, I'd be surprised if he comes near you again. You're painting me like some kind of rabid dog, and I don't appreciate it. <laughs> I do appreciate the impulse to help me out, though I do feel the need to point out that you don't. That I don't need you to fight my battles for me. You know that, I hope. Yeah, yeah. Good. Now, Mizuguchi sent. We should probably head to the front desk to report the results of our matches. Since we made a beeline straight, since you, we made a beeline straight here. Didn't go there yet myself. Oh, yeah, good point. Now, we'll be right back, guys. If you're called before we get the chance to come back, just look for us in the audience. And make sure we get a spot where you can see us, even if I have to elbow everyone else out of the way. <sighs> Don't get yourself in trouble. It's no trouble. I briefly stand around and watch these those two head out, seeing Keisuke gesturing with his hand uh, as him and Saya start talking about something I can't hear until they eventually get lost in the crowd and disappear from my sight. Can we head to my court? I might get called any moment, uh, so um, might as well wait there. Sure. Luckily the, luckily, the court I've been assigned to is right nearby, so it doesn't even take two minutes to get there. We hadn't yet stopped talking when I heard my phone going off in my pocket. I reached inside, grabbing my phone to check my messages. Right away, I see it's the competition committee letting me know that the match, the match on my court has officially ended and that they've started wiping the court down, preparing it for my game. Which, amusingly enough, I can't... Quite clearly see. I can quite clearly see. Uh, fix me a bit. Okay. Start reading these things slower. Convenient timing. That's for sure. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to check in with the officials for this match, and then I think I'm going to wait for it to start by the bench. I think some time to collect my thoughts and focus myself would be good for me right now. That's okay. Whatever you need, Aniki. Yeah, everyone has their own routine before a big event or performance or whatever. You see what I'm like backstage while waiting for my turn. I'm not that. I sure hope. I sure would hope so. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for following. Thanks for walking with me here. No problem. Good luck. Yeah, we'll let the others know know uh, you've headed in when they get here. There you go. This is good music. Hm. I'm pretty sure they, uh, they'll be able to tell June san you get what I meant? I head inside the court area, placing my bags on one of the benches and taking a seat. I make sure to greet anyone I pass by before I start watching the officials and, start, and volunteers wiping down the court. It's good to do nothing in particular. If I focus my mind on it, it's a good way of letting it of letting it turn off. I soon finish what they are doing, giving the all clear for a match to start. In the meantime, it seems that my opponent had already arrived, as I see him getting getting up from the other bench the, at the same time that I do. A stag of medium build that comes up up to about my chin in height. He looks athletic, but still somewhat unremarkable. His build reminds me a little of Kaken's, though with slightly more body mass. Once we lock eyes, he immediately looks away, fixing his gaze on the floor. That is all I need to know about his current mind state. Nervous opponent, huh? Not that I can blame him. Being an unseated player in these situations must be nerve-wracking. No one else knows about you. Probably no one else will be cheering for you. Wherever you go, it must always feel like playing on the away court. I feel a little sympathetic, but I try not to let that, pa try not to let that thought occupy my mind too much. At the end of the day, I still need to win my match, and feeling sorry for him won't make, won't make him feel better when he loses. The two of us take to the court as the umpire announces the duration of a warm-up session. We quickly start our own personal warm-up routines, with them inevitably ending on a short, low-effort rally, passing the ball back and forth so we can get the feel for our rackets and our swings. Then, it's time. Players, please come up to the net. We do as directed. When I get closer to him, I can tell that he's just a tad bulkier than I initially assumed from a distance. Or at least his chest sticks out more than I thought it did. I wonder if he's a power player like me. Good luck. Maybe we have a good match. Yeah, s same here. We quickly get to our, get our greetings out of the way. Afterwards, the umpire pulls out the coin, asking for the stag to call heads or tails. As the coin lands back on the umpire's hand, it is uncovered and shows that the stag had called it right. 
Like any reasonable person that isn't Keisuke, the boy decides to serve first, to which I nod in understanding. I will be the I will be the one officiating this match. Let us start the round one match between Yuichi Michimaya and Akira Unanaki. I will Will the players please go to their positions? Unanaki? That's a strange name for a stag. Wait, probably not what I should be thinking of right now. I hop on my spot a few times. Once I feel ready, I clutch the racket firmly with both with both my hands with both my heads. With both my heads? With both my hands. Firmly placing my feet on the ground and taking my position. I have to start from a strong foundation. Keep my core engaged and prepared. Once the umpire gives a signal, I watch the stag close his eyes for a second. Once he opens them, he tosses the ball in the air and... A few hours later, I sit quietly by the window, having retired to my room some time ago. Once the adrenaline faded away, exhaustion hit like a truck. I don't know why. I focused on improving my stamina ever since the last competition back in April, and I've only played a single match today. But I still feel so tired. So I sit and enjoy the quiet. Case gave us right. The view from here is pretty nice. Hey, is everything okay? Following a brief knock on the door, I look at the entrance just in time to see Keisuke emerging from the door before locking it behind him. Like, you know? <sighs> yeah, I'm fine. You disappeared a while ago. I thought you headed, you'd headed to the bathroom or something, but you didn't show any sure signs of coming back. The celebration was a bit much for me. I'm happy that we've all passed the next round. Don't get me wrong, but... Too much? Ah, uh, too much, yeah. Uh, too many voices, too much noise. It was throbbing a little bit, and I just wanted some quiet. You've been very quiet since we got back to the hotel. That much is true. In fact, you nearly dozed off in the bath. That was something I never thought I'd see. There comes a point when your desire to rest overrides your distaste for being naked in public. It was only me and Hayato cut in there. I'd hardly call it public. It was still one person too many. Only one, huh? A case gate gingerly pulls up a chair and sits next to me. It sounds like these that I notice how careful and smooth his every gesture is. Even the way he pulls up a chair, opens a box, grabs something, sips on a cup of tea. All those kinds of basic menial tasks are performed so carefully and smoothly, like some kind of practice movement. If I would normally just drag the chair and make some noise or lift it up completely, Keisuke grabs up, pulling it up with his feet just barely off the ground and sits down all in one swift motion. I can barely tell where one action stops the next one begins. It sounds silly to think about it. After all, it's pulling up a chair. I'd never think that there would be a refined way of pulling up a chair. But somehow, he does it. You mind if I sit here with you? Not at all. Keisuke leans to the side, letting our shoulders touch, giving me giving me my space and while, letting, while still letting me feel him nearby. It's nice. I like being able to sit together like this. I love watching you play today, by the way. I guess it slipped my mind. I should have said it earlier, but I forgot. You've watched me play tons of times. True, but I still love to. It takes my breath away. Heh, <laughs> isn't that what I said to you earlier today? Are you recycling my lines now? Don't look at me like that. I know I sound corny, but it's the truth. I've always loved watching you play. Hmm, that's why you came to our school, right? Right, it still feels embarrassing to admit. I don't mind. It's nice knowing that you watch me so intently. I always do, even before I fell for you. Granted, it was for a completely different reason, but... But still? But still... I readjust myself in my chair, letting my head rest against Keisuke. For his part, he accepts me without a single, wor single word or sound. I feel too tired to try and think up conversation, but I also don't feel like I need it. Just being around Keisuke like this, I can feel my battery starting to recharge again. I feel comfortable in the silence. June 30th. <laughs> Something creeps up on me, slowly coming closer and closer. I try to open my eyes, but no matter how much I struggle, it refuses to respond to me. Little by little, anxiety begins to well up in my chest as I become more and more aware of some kind of presence just around the corner, continuing to rise until it catches in my throat. I feel like I'm being washed, and there's something so heavy on top of my chest that it becomes harder and harder to breathe. Damn, you sounds like you've got that sleep paralysis. As I feel my brain becoming more and more starved of oxygen, my mind fires off despite just fires off def desperate pleas for help. Someone, please, anyone! My pleas are left unheard, or maybe even ignored. The last dying gasp of my conscious mind before finally fading off into <gasps> I jerk myself up and out of bed, sitting up violently and taking a deep breath. Before I even realize what is happening, I look around in a panic, still feeling that vague sense of danger that threatened to suffocate me, struggling to even breathe. As I look around, my mind slowly comes back to reality, eventually coming to the realization that I had been dreaming. Excuse me. I exhale, letting my body relax as I look down at myself, realizing that my futon is completely covered in sweat. 
Are you okay? My vision is still a bit blurry as it settles back into normalcy. I look to my side, gazing at the source of the voice that had called out to me. There, I see Keisuke, my boyfriend, kneeling on the floor next to me with a clear look of worry on his face. Oh, uh, hi there. Uh, what happened? You were breathing really hard while tossing and whimpering in your sleep. I tried waking you up. Oh, so that's what brought me back to reality. I felt so real, though. I, I tried remembering what I had what I'd been dreaming about, but it all it all quickly vanishes from my mind, leaving nothing but vague flashes in the place of memories. What used to be sheer terror is soon replaced by confusion. I feel like I was awake for a little bit, but I couldn't move. I felt like there was something at the corner of my room watching me, but now that I'm recovering my lucidity, the idea sounds completely absurd. I wonder if it was I wonder if it was Alex. Just kind of hanging back, observing. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. It was a nightmare. Nothing you need to worry about. If you say so. I take another look around the room, noticing that the curtains had already been drawn open and yet there just wasn't much light outside. There's no way it's nighttime again, so I'm imagining it might be really early in the morning. I didn't wake you, did I? No, you're fine. I've been up for 30 minutes or so. You have been drinking some tea and trying to... Well, it's a bit embarrassing to say, but I guess I've been trying to cope with my nerves. As I sit up properly and Leslie rub my eyes, I watch Keisuke get up and walk back to his chair by the window from the corner of my eye. You haven't even gotten dressed yet? Why would I? It's only you and I here. Then how did you get tea? Did you seriously not notice the hatch right next to the door? What did you think that was for? That's what that was? I thought it was a vent. <laughs> Yuichi, don't judge me. I just woke up. My brain isn't working yet. All right, all right, fair enough. How are you feeling, though? You were shaking pretty hard there. Like I said, I'm fine. It was just a nightmare. I, didn't, I don't even remember it. At worst, eh, I'm just gonna need to take a bath to get rid of all this sweat. Hmm, I can certainly stand behind that decision. That's the polite. That's the politest way anyone has ever told me I need a shower. Well, I wasn't trying to be mean or rude or anything, but I don't like sweat. Sorry. You really didn't pick the right hobby if you're that against it. I'd like to think that you don't need to like sweat to be an athlete. True, but you need to at least be able to stomach it. Well, we'll agree to disagree here. I get up on my feet, quickly stretching myself to chase away the early morning stiffness that comes from sleeping on a futon. I get that it's traditional and everything, but I really don't get how people managed to use these exclusively for so long in the past. I already missed my bed. I'll go downstairs to take a bath in a little bit. That should be good enough for you, right? Well... Keisuke sets down his now empty cup of tea, fidgeting in his seat for a few moments. He's very obviously trying and failing to come up with a way to say something, so I decide to stand here patiently and wait for him to find the words he's looking for. It's not like you smell bad or anything, and I was thinking of going out for a jog anyway. It would be a waste for you to take a bath right before it, so... A waste, huh? Is this your roundabout way to ask me to go with you? Could you? I'm afraid I might actually go insane if I stay cooped up here for much longer. I was planning on going alone since you were asleep, but now that you're awake... Sure, I don't mind. I'll wipe myself dry with a towel and maybe use some strong cologne to make sure I don't smell before we leave. Oh, I could lend you mine. It smells really nice. True, that true that it does, but wouldn't that mean that I'll end up smelling like you? Would that be truly so bad? I guess not. Besides, Keisuke's cologne is way nicer than anything I could afford. Although, wait. Um, are you sure that's going to be okay? Yours is really, really expensive. You don't have your savings anymore, so... Please, as if that's even remotely a concern. A few sprays of it aren't going to be what uses up all of it. Besides, this is more a method of control on my family's part than anything else. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Kate Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold-tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier anyway. If you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to our not-safe-for-work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye